So our next uh, speaker is Nils uh, Tigerson from uh, Copenhagen. I think you'll speak from... I seat. will speak from the, my chair, if you don't mind. Thank you. Uh, and thank you for the invitation. I really appreciate that uh, Europe is on the agenda also of this more global conference. Europe is an interesting topic in itself, of course, but it's also uh, a major actor in the international economy, and it's a model to some extent, less so than it was a few years ago, maybe, to other regions in the world. Um, I will comment on some of uh, your uh, initial comments, uh, André, uh, but I'd like to take a historical perspective. I have uh, some advantage in, in that respect because I've had the privilege of following discussions on monetary integration for about 40 years in, in Europe, uh, since the, uh, indeed the Van Eer uh, Committee. And um, I think it's important to understand clearly that this concept has evolved considerably since it was originally conceived. Um, when uh, Europe first discussed this idea, uh, the title of the session, indeed, uh, Optimum Currency Areas, was very much en vogue mainly because of North American economists had uh, brought it on, uh, Mandel, McKinnon, and Kennan. Uh, and it took, didn't take long time for Europeans to realize that um, uh, Europe was not likely to meet the criteria of the optimum currency area. At that time, certainly, uh, uh, the mobility of factors was uh, much lower than in existing large federations um, for different reasons. Uh, capital restrictions were uh, prevailing at the time. The flexibility of wages and prices was not sufficient to bring about much uh, exchange rate adjustment. And uh, maybe they were a little bit more open and, and the production structure was diversified. This, these were assets, but maybe not enough, particularly not when uh, Europe uh, was uh, unwilling or unprepared to follow up with some fiscal underpinnings, uh, which was also brought into the discussion by, uh, by American uh, authors. Um, so the first uh, outline of monetary union in Europe did in fact uh, authorize or vest some fiscal authority at the European level. Uh, there was to be a, a center of decision making also on the political side and that was to focus on the ability of countries uh, to co in a coordinated way to respond to somewhat differentiated disturbances to their economies. Uh, that didn't survive long because uh, the international crisis at the time uh, made Europeans shelve the idea of monetary union for about 15 years. Um, and indeed, uh, policies diverged very strongly uh, in the early, uh, in the rest of the 1970s at least. Uh, then we had the uh, European monetary system, uh, which was a more modest attempt. It was not seen by its fathers as a step to monetary union itself. If anything, it was seen as a step to a sort of regional IMF, and that's quite relevant, I think, to remember today. Um, because the European Monetary Fund, which was outlined by uh, the uh, decisions taken at the end of the 70s, did envisage uh, some uh, liquidity support to countries in external imbalances, of the kind that many are now advocating, and we are moving towards, indeed, at this point. But the uh, initiators of this project, uh, in a sense, messed it up by assuming that this could just be tacked onto the central bank credits, which were short-term nature, and it was not recognized as a truly political issue at the time. Um, in the 1980s, uh, we got the development of the single internal market, and that strengthened greatly the argument for having a single currency. It was indeed seen as necessary because otherwise nobody would really want to implement such a very detailed and in-depth uh, integration of uh, markets for goods and, and, and services. It was also seen as a, a way of, of uh, consolidating the convergence that had taken place in the course of the 1980s. Uh, France and Italy, although maybe precariously at the time, had converged somewhat. And nobody had the imagination to think that we would have the whole middle south southern Europe in, in uh, an EMU within uh, almost a decade, and that uh, uh, certainly Central and Eastern Europe would also become members of the European Union and candidates for uh, EMU. So uh, uh, the um, uh, climate in which uh, the decision to start the monetary union was taken were, was somewhat different from what, uh, of course, has uh, materialized uh, uh, subsequently. Um, you can say that, that the uh, emphasis on the fiscal uh, matters has receded into the back, but there's a good, I think, economic reason for that, and I think 
you may also have underplayed that a bit in, in Jean in some of his writings. Uh, the uh, idea in, in Europe was no longer to coordinate uh, fiscal policies in the proper sense of telling countries to do this or that in their fiscal policy. That not only was that uh, politically impossible, but the economic case for that kind of uh, more stabilizing function at uh, European level was not the main purpose of the Maastricht Treaty. That was indeed to uh, prevent strongly deviant individual behavior, the kind of debt accumulation we have seen, unfortunately, uh, some, some years later. Uh, and that was seen as uh, uh, feasible, that kind of, of coordination, if you want to call it that, uh, by a simple rule rather than more detailed, uh, vesting detailed authority at the European level. It was an intermediate position. I prefer to call it sometimes an, an arm's length relationship in relation to individual countries, but one that was seen as having a chance of being realistic. I don't think anyone I saw it at the time as a full equilibrium. Uh, it would have to be supplemented at the time. It was work in progress. Uh, but, of course, uh, progress was not seen as necessary immediately, uh, and it became very difficult. And the tragedy, in a way, is that uh, it became difficult in part because it required then uh, subsequent changes of the treaty, and politicians have, for obvious reasons, become very nervous about suggesting that to their uh, populations. I think there's a further element that uh, illustrates the climate in which uh, monetary union was conceived. Uh, uh, the emphasis was on creating an ideal or narrow monetary institution with a narrow but very strong mandate to have price stability in the medium term, but to protect that institution against uh, more political tasks. Responsibility for financial stability was one such uh, restraint on, on the ECB, and, and I was struck as a member of the committee that prepared the outline for monetary union to see that the central banks didn't want to take on any responsibility for financial stability, maybe because they thought they wouldn't get it, they were asking for too much, uh, or it was just tedious work that was unnecessary. They could always catch up with developments when uh, they arose. So this was one constraint. The other was, of course, the uh, uh, prohibition of financing of government deficits, in the end also the so-called no bailout uh, uh, role. Um, so um, we started with a draft of, of uh, monetary union, which was, uh, in a sense, uh, incomplete as a vision of what would happen over the next uh, 10 or even uh, 20 years. Um, now, uh, five, I would say, major changes in the reform of, of uh, uh, the uh, of EMU are being uh, implemented. They, they have uh, broadly been decided, though on, on one crucial point, uh, we're not there yet. Uh, the rules regarding national uh, fiscal policy will be, uh, become more explicit and be monitored much more strictly than has been the case in the past. That is basically an update of the present uh, system, but with more explicit rules. Focus in monitoring performance will be widened beyond the monetary, as both uh, Jean and others said, uh, to also the accumulation of private debt and, and external imbalances. There will be an, in, an imbalances indicator uh, without any sanctions, obviously. Uh, structural reforms will be monitored much more closely than was the case under the so-called open method of coordination under the Lisbon process. Uh, a permanent crisis mechanism will be in existence from 2013. There's a gap. We are still two years short of that. Uh, and more authority will be vested in the uh, central bank in particular, uh, and at the European level, in, in uh, monitoring financial stability and, and organizing European supervision, which is a major step uh, forward and, and an evolution from 1991. Um, the fiscal rules are, of course, the most uh, uh, interesting, and, and uh, uh, one can wonder why uh, uh, countries could drift so far from the norms that were agreed at, at Maastricht. Uh, and how they could get to the uh, exorbitant levels of debt, uh, uh, and, and why others did not uh, monitor them more closely. That was a combination of, of uh, many factors, uh, of uh, uh, cyclical factors certainly in, in the last few years, uh, uh, of uh, excessive politeness among policy officials at the European level, uh, and um, uh, uh, a lack of a sense of, of playing together with the markets in enforcing discipline, 
One uh, surprise, I think, to many of us has been that the uh, financial market also took so long in, in uh, uh, exerting any intolerance vis-à-vis -vis the uh, levels of debt that were being built up in, in Europe. Uh, some say that was because they were simply not uh, paying attention to it, governments were reassuring them. Others thought that the uh, credibility of the no-bail rule was a crucial uh, factor. Uh, but the challenge in any case for the future is to develop a system where political and financial market discipline can work together uh, and not certainly be abandoned as they were both at the same time. Uh, the Stability and Growth Pact, about uh, which I've noted that some people speaking at this conference are almost sneering for its ineffectiveness, uh, uh, I think was, was a well-intended uh, mechanism. Uh, it was not particularly intelligent, it was not maybe sufficiently differentiated, but with the change in, in its method of operation uh, since 2005, which was certainly a relaxation, but also a, a way of getting more to grips with the, the budgets in individual countries, uh, then uh, it, it uh, left a little bit more time and, and uh, possibilities of intervening more directly in country policies. So it's, uh, in my view, uh, a bit uh, difficult to understand how things could go quite as wrong as they in fact uh, did. Some of the def deficiencies are being repaired. Eurostat, which monitors the national data, have been given more powers. Um, there are better analytical tools now to separate out the effects of uh, extraordinary booms in the financial sector and the housing sector, which fouled up the budgets in, in uh, Ireland and in, in Spain in particular. Uh, and um, uh, the sanctions will be diffi more difficult to reject uh, with the changes in the voting procedure in the future. But there's no automaticity still, as the uh, Germans in particular had uh, proposed. Um, so um, uh, the, the basic principles are the same, but there is a, a good deal of hope, primarily because uh, financial market discipline is now very much in, in the picture, that uh, the modified rules can work uh, from now on. Um, let me uh, turn to the uh, other... Uh, yeah, yeah, thank you. Um, <coughs> Of course, uh, the, the ambitions of, of influencing policies outside the monetary area are limited and have to be limited to political commitments in the absence of uh, treaty changes. Uh, it's well worth uh, recalling in that in that sense, uh, Europe is still an experiment and, and work in progress in, in my view. Um, on the um, uh, macroeconomic indicators that are now coming into play, I think the most interesting issue uh, is that of Symmetry. Are we moving towards a more symmetrical system, or will EMU retain the original idea of asymmetry? EMU was not meant to be just an average of the performance of countries uh, in a spirit of solidarity. It was a, an effort to conduct good policies in the monetary area, exemplified by an objective, common objective to have low medium-term price stability, in the fiscal side to have uh, cautious, prudent, uh, sustainable uh, fiscal uh, policies. Uh, that was the um, uh, uh, that that was the aim, um, but uh, does this uh, require modification at this point? I must say I have, uh, although I'm not uh, German, I have a good deal of sympathy for the German position that says, why should we expand uh, policy with the demand? We are already growing faster than most of the uh, European Union countries. Uh, we do have a substantial surplus. Uh, but uh, we are benefiting by the uh, growth performance we have shown and the expansionary fiscal policies of the past two years. Uh, we have um, extended these benefits also to other countries in, in the Union. So I don't think it's fair to say that uh, Germany is driving other countries into uh, uh, a uh, disadvantageous um, position. Uh, competitiveness is also a difficult indicator because uh, uh, the problems really go beyond simple price indicators. Uh, they go to the inadequate specialization in, in the southern European countries in particular, uh, not in Ireland, uh, to the global economy we have today. And uh, that requires more than price adjustment, but, but uh, certainly wage moderation is the essential part of, of that. The one uh, point where we are still weak uh, is on the crisis mechanism itself. We have a mechanism uh, from 2013 which looks reasonably reassuring except for one important feature, namely that they 
the, the lending that will be given through the European uh, stability mechanism will be a, a, a senior debt uh, and will make it more difficult for these countries to return to private markets than was strictly uh, necessary. So that feature, uh, one hopes, could still be, uh, uh, be modified. Uh, there, there's also uh, the disappointment that uh, uh, there's no real uh, statement about uh, debt restructuring. In a way, I understand fully why the European authorities don't want to address this issue as long as, uh, as they are uh, faced with such, so much uncertainty in, in financial markets. Uh, but that is uh, probably unavoidable over the next uh, couple of years in one form or another. May I end by uh, the trilemma question? Um, uh, Kevin O'Rourke was uh, very right in using that as a framework in his presentation. Uh, the trilemma of, of Tommaso Barroscopa building on the Mondel Fleming model was crucial in, in starting uh, EMU. And the uh, uh, trilemma of uh, uh, Danny Roderick is, is also highly uh, suggestive. Uh, there is, I think, uh, a third trilemma. And if I'm not mentioning it, Wolfgang Münchau will, because he has said there are three things we would like to avoid. But we can't avoid all three. The three are there's, there's no exit from EMU. That, I think, stands firm because that's too costly. There can be no debt restructuring, secondly. And there can be no bailout. These two last elements will have to be brought in over the next couple of years. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Niels.